Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. And welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministries. Woo! I hope you had a great week um, last week. And I ask the Lord to bless you for this upcoming week as well. Before we get started, have a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for your mercies, for your grace, for your protection, for your love, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning, giving us a reasonable portion of help and strength, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for waking us up with you in our minds, Father, to help us to serve you better, Father God, to be better Christians. Father God, I just ask you that you would just touch each and every person under the sound of my voice, Father God. You know what each and every person stands in need of, Lord. Some have lost loved ones. Some are going through some storms in their bodies, Father God, some trials. Some, are, some people are have financial troubles, Lord. Some have children troubles, husband troubles. Lord, we just present it all to you, Father God, that you would just direct their path, Father God, that you would give them wisdom and guidance to do your perfect will, Lord, not what the flesh wants to do, but to do what you called us to do, Father God. If you said stand, give us the power and the wisdom to stand, Father God. And Father God, if you said go, give us the wisdom to go and show us where to go. Father God, we just ask you that you would bless everyone, Lord. That we ask you, Lord, that you continue to watch over our country, Father God. Satan is running rampant. Father God, we ask you to take control of things, Lord. Protect us, Father God, because every week there's another mass shooting, Father. Lord, you said there will be times like this. And you said when the, time, when the end times come, we're going to see all kinds of things, Lord. So, Father God, help us to get right, Father God, so when that time comes for us, Father God, when we have to leave this earth, that we will have a a home in heaven with you, Lord. Not based on what we think we should be doing, but help us to live godly lives, Father. Help us to commit our life to you, Father God, to you for you to be our Lord and Savior, Lord. It's time to stop playing <clears throat> for those who are playing, but to get real, because time is drawing on. So, Father God, we just cast all our cares to you, Father God, that you continue to work on us and work through us, Father. Lord, we ask you that you would touch the man of the hour, Lord, that he would bring forth a word of Zion, Father God, that you would just anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord, that he would say what you have placed on his heart to say, Father God. Give him power, give him wisdom, Father God, and Father God, we just pray, Lord, that you would touch our ears and our hearts, Father God, that we would hear and receive your word, Lord, and that, Father God, that we would set you as our Lord and our Savior, Father, if we have not done so, Lord. Father God, we, won't, we don't want anyone to be lost. We want everyone to be saved, Father God, because that's what you died for. And we don't want to waste the gift that you gave us. And we thank you, Lord. We ask you, Father God, that you would touch the psalmists of the hour, Lord. That you would help us to sing forth your words of Zion with boldness, with conviction, with love, Father God. And Lord, that you would just strengthen her voice, Father God, and fill her with your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord. We ask you, Father, that you would touch each and every person that will pray today, whatever part they may have in the service. Father God, even those who are listening, don't Michael when he prays, Father God. Help us, Father God, to fill your anointing, Father God. Help us, Father, to speak your words, Lord. And Father God, we ask you to take full and total control of this service, Lord, and everyone who hears it. And we thank you, Father, in the bands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I hope you were able to join us this morning for our Sunday school lesson. It was um, instructed by Deacon Joseph Miller. And this morning's lesson came from Isaiah chapter 47, verses 10 to 15. The background scripture came from Isaiah chapter 47. And the devotional lesson, lesson as well as the sermon, the uh, readings came from chapter 47, verses 10 to 15. And he talked about God foretells destruction. You know, God placed Babylon, even though Babylon was wicked, he had a purpose for Babylon. And their purpose was to correct Judah for not following his, his words and his wisdom. And he also, even though he used Babylon, he actually destroyed Babylon because they were disobedient as well. They thought they were above everybody who could do whatever they want to do and not have any repercussions for what they're going to do. But you know what? Everything you do, whether it's been allowed for you to do it or not, there is a repercussion, and you have to suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. Our best bet is to follow what God wisdom is and to do what God told us to do. And then those consequences that we, fit, we 
receive after that will be positive, not negative. Mm -hmm. Next week's lesson is going to be coming from Isaiah chapter 49. The devotional as well as the background scripture is going to be Isaiah chapter 49 verses 1 through 17. The lesson is going to be from Isaiah 49 verses 1 through 13. Next week's lesson is called God foretells redemption. And our presenter will be our own minister, Michael Eccles Jr. He will bring forth the lesson next week. You can join our lessons by Facebook <coughs> and as well as Zoom. For those who want the Zoom information, the information should be on the um, page. And we also upload the information, all, all the teachings and the sermons and Bible studies are uploaded to YouTube for those who want to go back and review it later on. <clears throat> our scripture this morning, well, our sermon this morning is coming from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, and it's entitled, The Truth. So get your Bibles, and I'll be reading this scripture for you. John 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether you go, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Our next voice will be from Minister Vashti Eccles with the Samoan selection, followed by Pastor Michael Afonso Eccles Sr. with the Word of God. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever i am afraid i will trust in you i will trust in you let the weak say i am strong in the strength of the Lord, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs 
of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Amen. Amen. You cracked it. Amen. 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 You are my hiding place. How many know that's the truth about the Lord? Amen. Yes. Amen. Whenever I'm afraid, I can put my trust in Him. Yes. Yes. Let God. the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. rich. Because of what the Lord has yes. done. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're so grateful to God for all <laughs> that He is doing in our lives. We are uh, blessed to be in this beautiful day. Give God praise. Give God a high five. Amen. Amen. Say thank you for a beautiful day. <laughs> thank you for a beautiful day. <laughs> yes, a beautiful day. Um, we thank God for all the things he's doing. Thank God for each one of you that are joining us this morning. As we seek to glorify God in all that we say and do, we want him glorified. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Father, as we come this morning before this holy word, we now ask, oh God, that you will forgive us for all our sins. And God, that you will make us now a vessel that you might use, oh God, and flow through to speak to your people, oh God. Let somebody be saved this day, somebody delivered, somebody helped, somebody healed, somebody made whole, not because of me, but because of your word is such a powerful word. And we thank you, God, today for these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. We're in a sort of a series um, on John 14, particularly verse 6, where Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come into the Father except by me. Well, last week we mentioned the way, and this week we want to deal with the truth. We talked about the way on last week in such a, a, a way that I want you to understand that there are many different directions. And let me just sum it up. There are many different directions out here, but there's only one true way. Many ways you could choose. Let me, let me, let me illustrate this. I heard this illustrated, and I like it with illustrated. I'm going to do the best I can with it. Just suppose that you and your friends decided to go hiking. Me, never. But you decided to go hiking into the woods, a thick brush woods together. And you got in the middle of those woods and you got lost. And so right before you, you see two different path, pathways. In one pathway, you notice there's a person that's laying down flat on their face, they're dead. But on the other way, you know the pathway, there's a person who's alive. Which way would you go? I'll give you a minute. You would choose a living. So I want you to understand there are many pathways, more than just two, many pathways, but there's only one uh, leader that's still alive. Mm -hmm. Buddha, he's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, Muhammad, he's gone. Mm -hmm. Krishna, they're gone. They have a pathway. You can follow their teacher, but you can't follow them. Mm -hmm. But only one is still living. Amen. Amen. And that's Jesus Christ. So I want you to know he is the only way. He is the only way. Not only is, is, is he the only way, he is the truth. He is the truth. Now, I know it's hard in our day, it's hard to understand truth. Because uh, we've come into a late age, some 300 years ago, if you would say what truth is, somebody would tell you it's whatever God says. And somebody would tell you that it's what the church says. That's what truth is. But now it's not like that. Because now we've come into an age we call of enlightenment and modernism and all these different thoughts. We, we begin to, we can think for ourselves, right? We've grown. We can think for ourselves. We don't have to do what's traditional. So therefore, truth has lost its, uh, its absoluteness. And now we look at truth in a relative way. When I say relative, I mean that we'll say what's true for you may not make true for me. We hear people, the young people say, walk in your truth. Uh, that's your truth, not my truth. Well, uh... Truth is not like that. Truth is absolute. Truth, I've been thinking about it throughout the week. Truth, truth is not something that you can kind of be fuzzy about. Truth is something that's concrete. The word truth, aletheia in the Greek, has an idea of something that's uncovered. Something that, that, that cannot, that's something that's sure. And, and we need surety. And um, I want to talk about what truth is, how it affects our lives, and why is it so important. What, what truth is? What truth is? Truth is that which is sure and steadfast. You can't, you know, I think of it and we think about math is the, own, is the most pure science there is. And I would take you one plus one, but I think I'm going to do some more technical thinking with us. How about two plus two? <laughs> I'm taking us to another level. 
2 plus 2 equals 4. In any language, in any place in the world, 2 plus 2 equals 4. So that is a truth that cannot be altered, denied, or uh, uh, varied. And you know what you can do with that truth? You can uh, disagree with it. But guess what? Still true. Still true. Still true. You can uh, protest against it. But what is it? Still true. Still true. You can be offended by it because you want it to be three. You can say it's too exclusive. It excludes five. It excludes six. It excludes seven. Those people are being excluded. We have to include everybody. I hope you are following the thought here. So truth has to have a basis or it's not truth at all. It's either true or it's not true. And so we see uh, that, that Jesus, uh, what kind of man, a mere man, would, could a mere man actually stand before a group of people? What if I would stand before you and tell you I'm the truth? You would say you got beside yourself. What if I tell you that I'm the way? You, you would think <laughs> blasphemous. blasphemous. <laughs> because I'm not in a position, but, but Jesus claimed this because he was not a mere man like myself. He was virgin born. He is Emmanuel, which means God with us. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He's not like a mere man. He is God himself. So he stands before a group of people. One day he stood before I was reading. I was thinking about this. I got so many things floating in my spirit I want to share with you. And I hope the Holy Spirit will help pull these together for me. I'm trying to, quali I'm trying to quantify in our own minds that, that truth is not a, a very something we choose. Truth has already been established. Truth is that which is universal, and it's that truth does not change. Opinions change, people change, cultures change, but truth is always going to be true. When we're gone, if, we, if this world is here 100 years, 2 plus 2 will still be what? 2. 2, two plus what? 2. Oh, we got, we got some rebels in the house. <laughs> it will always be for Why? Because truth is a fact. It does not change. It's true anyhow. And we got to understand this, that, that God is not going to vary what's true because we disagree with it. God is not going to back down. I heard somebody say the other day that, that if, if we just didn't have the Bible, people, people wouldn't hate uh, gay pride day. You know, one back in the day when I grew up, it wasn't gay. This wasn't something to be proud of. It was something if you were, you were ashamed and you held your head. But on our day to day, you want to say something that's going to revel people's failures? You want to say something that'll call you judgmental? All I'm saying is that I'm following what truth says. Although culture may change, people may change, opinions may change. What we got to do to, to be able to have our own way, what we got to do to have our own way, we got to get rid of God or we got to change the God. We got to change the God, we, the God we serve. We got to get rid of him to say he's wrong or we have to modify him to our times. But God says this in Malachi, I am the Lord, I change not. That's what he says. He doesn't change. He still has the same attitude. He still says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He still presents to us the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He still presents to us a narrow way and a broad way. He still truth presents to us heaven or hell. He still presents these things to us, black and white. We cannot, we cannot deviate from what is true. Truth will always be true. It will does not, it, is, it, is, it is not altered. It is not changed. What we have in this text is not Jesus is not telling us that, that he not, he's not just telling us the truth. He's not showing us the truth. He says, I am the truth. Mm -hmm. So he is in our equation. He is our two plus two. He is now the level of which we level all other truths. Truth is the uncut, the unchangeable, the, the bedrock, the reality of what real things are. So I can, I can be in my own world. You know what I can say in my own world? In my own world, in walking in my truth, I can say I don't need gas for my car to run. In my own world, I can say that I don't have to pay attention to the needle that's in that car saying that it's on E because in my world, I don't need gas to run my car. That's my truth. That's my reality. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now that when I'm in my own mind, I know you see a big guy in front of you, 
but I no longer, uh, 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 I no longer consider myself uh, uh, overweight. I'm slender. Uh, uh, I'm now in my own mind. I'm, I'm, I'm slender in my own mind. Translender. Translender. That's why right. <laughs> I'm no longer fat. I'm translender. That's what I'm looking for. I'm translender. And I can walk around and I can walk around thinking I look good and put on these outfits. It's only made for small people. And I can walk around with my head up. And I can walk around proud, but guess what? I can be in all kind of pride, but guess what? I still look a mess. Because I'm not, some things aren't fitted for big guys and big girls to wear. Amen. Amen. I know you've seen them, I don't want to go there. You've seen them on the street, and you want to hop in and wear something like that. Because some stuff ain't made to be out like that. Amen. If you got it, you're not supposed to flaunt, but so much of it. But if you don't have it, definitely don't try to flaunt it. <laughs> <laughs> So the truth of it is, the truth of it is, we can we can say that we can say we can say all we want. If, if I was sending someone to my house, I would say, "Go to my house." I'm trying to get you to see what the truth is. Go to my house and get something for me. And here's my key. And you say, "I don't need your key. I got a key." Mm. <laughs> and you say, "Matter of fact, I got this key. I bought it myself." And my key. I think is more beautiful than your key. And I keep selling you, and I'm telling you what, to get into my house, you got to use the key that opens that door. You say, well, I found this key, or I bought this key. I think this key is better, but guess what? You can think the key is better, we can start a whole new religion about your key. Your key backwards. And only your key, but guess what? That key will never get into the door that's, that opened the door to this house. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is that key. Yeah. Amen. You may have other keys, but there's only one key to heaven. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Why am I bearing this? Because I got you. I want you to understand, child of God, that when you Jesus says he's the truth, you can't, you, you, you can say, I don't believe that and walk away. That's your choice. But if you say you believe that, then it ought to affect your life. You can say, Well, I don't believe that. He, he couldn't have meant that. I take him as a prophet. He was a good man. He, he set an example. He had great philosophy. That's not what he said about himself, though. <laughs> that's what you say about him because that's societally acceptable. But Jesus says, I am the truth. Which means that all other truths must be measured by him to be true. Mm -hmm. All other things must be measured by his standard. Mm -hmm. Two plus two is four. No matter what you say. So if I say that I know Jesus is the truth, that means that everything he says is true, even when I don't like it. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. That means now what that truth means to me, I'll tell you what truth is, Jesus. What does it mean to me now? Now everything I do must be measured by him, not by what I think. And I, I know I hear some of you, you say, well, I was singing this morning about my own life. And all of us have something that we love to do that's wrong. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me this morning, do you? I don't hear nobody talk. We all have something that we like to do that's wrong. And I think about the many things I would like to do that God said was wrong. And how that I had to come to a place in my own life of saying, Lord, I surrender. People think because it feels good to me, it must be what's for me. People think because it's, it, it, it's what I like, it's supposed to be right. So if I like being a bank robber, I'm going to rob banks. Why? Because what I like to do. If I want to steal your stuff, I'm going to steal your stuff. Why? Because of what I want to do. If I want to have a, a weapon and go to a school and shoot up people, that's okay because of what I want to do. So now we got in this world that's so twisted because we've changed everything. We no longer want to go by what God said. We want to do, as the book of Judges says, every man was doing what was right in our own sight. The morality has changed because our belief systems have changed. And when you begin to mix belief systems, you begin to mix morality. Now, who is right about what? Who is right? Is a man a man? Is a woman a woman? Or is a man a woman a woman? What? How am I hurt some man tell me? How are you going to teach your children about the, bee, the birds and the bees? How do you explain to your children that the birds and the birds no longer go with the birds? But the bees and the bees are no longer the bees. Only when they say they're the bees. 
How are you going to explain that to your children today that we sit down and say there's a man, there's a woman? You, you can't because why? Because all these things are mixed up. And the very things we used to be ashamed of, now we're walking around proud of. I know I'm hitting it hard, but you know what? God didn't call me to be popular. He told me, call me to stand with the truth. And you can like things. And I have liked things and enjoyed things that God has said were wrong. But you know what I'm thinking this morning? About the goodness of God? You've got to make some decisions. Whether you will follow what you like or you'll follow what you, what the God you love. <laughs> you got to make some decisions. You can't, you can't have both. And I thank God for the things I look back on my life. I had to make some decisions by the power of God's spirit. Not on my own strength. I had to look at my own life and say, you know what? I like doing this, but this is not of God. This feels good. It seems right. The Bible Proverbs tells us there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is a ways of death. It leads to my last section here. I want you to know that, that I'm telling you all this to let you know is that God has not changed. God has not changed. No matter how proud we are, God has not changed. No matter what we say, God has not changed. Black is still black. White is still black. White is still white. We got to understand this now. That Look, look, even our lives have colors. <laughs> our stealing has come. It's wrong for me to steal from you, but it's okay for me to steal from my company. Mm -hmm. we, we, we get, we, it wasn't a real lie. It wasn't what? A white lie. But how do you know no matter what color it is, a lie is still a lie, and the fall of lies is the devil. Mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm stepping, so we got to see Jesus is, he says he is, he is a measurement of truth. He is the measurement of what's real and what's right and what's uncovered. He is that. He is the truth. But but we got to understand is that if we believe he's the truth, then what he is shall affect how I live my life. I no longer live my life under what I want to do. I no longer live my life under what? The way I want to live. I live my life according to what he says about me. And what he says about me, you know what? Sometimes I shout and sometimes I cry. <laughs> Sometimes I rejoice and sometimes I repent. Amen. Because what he says about me is true whether I like it or not. So some of us aren't ready for truth. Amen. Amen. Some of us aren't ready to face the truth. We aren't ready to deal with truth. And that's why Pilate stood there in the 19th chapter of the book of John. Pilate stood there before Jesus. Jesus told him, he asked Jesus, are you a king? He said, you say I am. He, Jesus said, I represent, I couldn't represent the truth. And Pilate said right in front of Jesus, he said, what is true? And turned away. Because after all, Pilate knew that the charges were trumped up. Mm -hmm. Pilate knew and said, some six times I believe, I found no fault in this man. But yet, he still turned him over, not to justice, but to the people. Mm -hmm. And we're still putting on Jesus on trial today. We're not, we're not judging him in a right way. Historical he was. Amen. He really lived. We're not judging him in the right way. We want to we wanna have some blue-eyed, blonde hair, a uh, dress wearing Jesus. And that's not... Who Jesus really is. That's not who he is. He's the one who walked into a temple area. Where there were men, grown men and women there selling in the temple. He walked in there and by himself turned tables over. And you don't hear one person step to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talking about a macho man. He was a man. Amen. He was a man who could stand in front of the religious leaders and say, You're snakes and vipers. Mm -hmm. And you're making children the worse than you are. Your white graves, your, 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 your graves are painted white. Outside is white, but inside is dead man bones. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Jesus. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. He measured truth. Truth was measured by what he said. So now I have to live my life in light of who Jesus is. Amen. And that's a challenge for us, even as children of God, and a great challenge for those who do not know him because they say it's impossible. I'm here to tell you today, with, with man it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So I had to walk away from some stuff, Beverly. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. Not because I was, felt like I was too holy. No, I did feel like, I, yeah, it was that. I did feel like I, I served the holy God. But I had to walk away from some, I had to, I had to leave some friends behind who weren't going in the, in the same direction I was going in. I had to leave some situations behind because you know what? If you got to make a decision whether I'm going to follow God or I'm going to follow the world. He says there's two roads. There's one that's narrow. There's one that's broad. But the broad way has a whole lot of people on it. The narrow road only has a few people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because anybody can walk down the broad, the broad road. The broad road, you can do what you want to do and still, and still worship. Mm -hmm. You can do what you want to do and still have church. You can do what you want to do and still shout. But the narrow road is that it's conviction. 
The narrow road is that of, of life being changed. The narrow road is having our mind renewed. The narrow road is that of living a life that, that's according to God's word. It's a narrow road. And few, Jesus said this, few that be that find it, which means you got to seek after it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we got we, we see Jesus the truth. We see that what how we see how important that truth is to our lives. Now, now let's look at that. Why is why are you harping so much on truth? Because truth matters. Mm -hmm. Truth has consequences. Mm -hmm. Lies have consequences. The fall of lies is Satan. And because of his lies, we now live a born in sin and shape of iniquity. Because of his lies, the world is now shooting our children. Because of his lies, we're now killing one another in the streets. Because of his lies, we got more, uh, we got we have more uh, uh killing on the street than they have inside the prisons. Where the criminals are. I guess the criminals are afraid to come out now. <laughs> <laughs> they say for the <laughs> I had a cousin who was in there many, many years ago. Oh, many, many years ago. He passed away. He's deceased now. But I went to see him. He says, um, I'm looking at TV. What's going out there? He said, I don't know if I'm going to come out there anymore. <laughs> he in prison saying this. Can you imagine what he'd be saying now and out there? Mm. They probably say, your time is over. And they look, well, you know what? I'm going to do something so I can stay a little longer. There's too much killing in the streets. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Because we must look horrible to those who have been incarcerated for less things. They see people getting away with now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we, so true. So, avoiding truth has consequences. Yeah. I can, I can avoid truth. I can, I can avoid truth. I can, uh, I can, I can believe with all my heart that that poison won't kill me. I can believe with all my heart that 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 uh, people in the street aren't mean. Everybody's. I heard one man saying he used to be a, he used to be a Christian. He's an ex-Christian and an ex-pastor. Now I know what he was. He's on talking on TikTok. You know what's his name? I said, man, you know why? Only reason why you can be ex is because you never were. Mm. Yeah. That's the only reason why. You're not an ex-Christian. If you're a real Christian, me, me, being, me not being a Christian is the same way me saying I got to go back to my mother's womb and act like I never was born. Mm -hmm. Because you're God's child, you're born God's child. You always yeah. be God's child. But if you're not God's child, you think you're God's child, for various reasons you can't step out and say I was this. No, you got to... Go back. If I would take time to examine what he means a Christian, you'll find out that he thought a Christian was doing right and not being right with God. He would think a Christian means I got a whole list of things I do to, to maintain my salvation. And I'm tired, of, I'm tired of doing these things. I want to stretch out and be what I want to be. So I'm leaving that Christianity behind. But true Christians understand that you've been born again by God. You're in a relationship with God. I talked about that, those two paths. How the living one standing there. How, which one would you follow? You will follow the little one. The little one will say, let's come this way. This is the way to life. Who be foolish that can follow a path that led to death? But yet made it do by the thousands every day. Truth has a way. Not being the truth can be dangerous. Not being, that's why it's so important because you know what? Truth has consequences. You make decisions today that can affect you the rest of your life. Yeah. Truth has consequences. And you know, just like truth has consequences, we got to understand the consequences for making the wrong decision can affect us for eternity. Mm -hmm. Wow. For, for, for following lies can cost us our eternal state. That's why it's important. That's why Paul, if you read the book of Galatians, it's not just about uh, uh, circumcision. and It's not just about uh, uh, mixing the law with grace. It's deeper than that. Paul was writing there about the corruption of the gospel. If the gospel is corrupted just a little bit, it causes people not to be saved. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why he was so adamant about them not keeping the law, bringing the law. He was concerned about them because if you bring in some other entity, you corrupt the gospel. Mm -hmm. He says a little leaven leavens a whole lump. What does that mean? You put a little yeast in the dough, it's going to affect all the dough. Yeah. And right now there's a lot of yeast going on. Mm -hmm. Some of us have yeast. Of, oh, I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's a, le a yeast infestation, and it affects all of them. You put, you take the lie. You understand what the lie is? I'm, I'm almost done. I know it's not a shout message, but it's a true message. You take a little lie or a little bit of yeast and put it into a whole lot of dough. It affects everything. So Satan, what he does, Satan is not creative, nor are those who follow him. What they do is they don't, they don't tell you all lie. They just give you the truth, and they stuff it with a lie. So you think you're hearing the gospel, but you're not hearing the gospel. Yeah. You're not hearing the gospel. If you hear Jesus going to solve all your problems, you're not hearing the gospel. Mm -hmm. 
You're not hearing the gospel if you hear that Jesus is going to make you rich. You're not hearing the gospel. Mm -hmm. You're not hearing the gospel if you hear that Jesus is going to always heal you from all your ailments. You're not hearing the gospel. You're hearing the gospel when you hear the fact that Jesus died in my state. Mm -hmm. He died so I wouldn't have to die. Mm -hmm. Now he lives so I can live. You're hearing the gospel. If you're hearing the blood of this gospel, you got to understand it was by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm saved not by what I've done. I'm saved because of what he's done. Right. Amen. I'm saved because he took my place. He, he bore that, that penalty. Do you understand? On the, before Jesus went to the cross, he went through six trials, all illegal. All illegal trials. Three trials by the religious crowd and three trials by the, the civil people, the Romans. He went through six trials within six hours. And all trials were all illegal. Done at night and done in a hurry. Mm -hmm. From the time he was arrested to the time he was crucified, it was 12 hours. Mm -hmm. We put somebody on the death, on the death penalty, now they stand up for years. Mm -hmm. But they rushed Jesus through. So I want to let you know something is that this is how truth is treated. <laughs> truth is treated with hostility. Mm -hmm. When face to face with truth, Potter can look and say, What is truth? Turn his back and say, this man is innocent. I'm washing my hands. I'm turning him over to you guys to do what you want to do. But he's still responsible. That's what, how truth is treated. Mm -hmm. Truth was lied on. Truth was backstabbed. You know, in this very portion of scripture we, I, we read before you today, in the 13th chapter, Jesus was troubled in spirit because he realized that there was one of them who was going to betray him. Mm -hmm. Somebody who he, who he had taught, who he had chosen, yet it was a traitor. And then another one he was close to, you would deny me with the cock crows. Mm -hmm. He knew that the people he was around were not, in our eyesight, were not worth giving anything for in our eyesight. Mm -hmm. But yet he was still willing to give all of it for us. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad about it? Mm -hmm. Willing to walk around and wash each one of their feet, although he was the master of them all. Willing to serve in any place he needed to serve. For he didn't come to be served, he came to serve. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. Aren't you glad you're one of them? Yeah. So I'm here to tell you that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the bread of life. Amen. Amen. The only way you're going to be satisfied. He is the true vine. The only real connection you're going to have. He is the resurrection and the life. The only way you want to have resurrection is by being connected to him. We're not waiting to be resurrected. We know the resurrection. He is the resurrection yeah. and the life. He, he, is, he is our strength. He is our comforter. He is the shepherd, the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. He is the door that you get into the, to the, the, the uh, sheepfold from. He is these things. He is the great I am. Before Abraham was, I am. He is a friend. Every time I begin to get lonely, I know that Jesus is right there. Can I get a witness? Amen. He is a comforter. Has he comforted you? He is a consoler. Has he come beside you to console you and get trouble? He is a strength. We had the weak, the end of the strength. How many met Jesus at the end of your strength? Oh, he shows up just a nickel time. How many know he's a one time God? Yeah, he's yeah. a true God. He's a loving God. He's a powerful God. We got to learn. We got to deal with you're dealing with truth. When you deal with Jesus, you're dealing with truth. He said this that if you find, if you continue on my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know what? The truth. And the truth shall make you free. Yeah. It's not just reading the Bible that makes you free, it's not just going to church that makes you free. It's not just a studying the scripture to make you free. All those things are elements. What makes you free is when you know the truth. Mm -hmm. And that truth that you know is that what delivers you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we know Jesus Christ, he brings deliverance. He cuts the chase, study. He cuts it right there because he's that kind of God. How many glad you know the truth? Yes. How many glad you know the truth? You don't mind telling people, I know the truth. Amen. You ought to be proud. People are walking around proud about sin. You ought to be proud about Jesus. Amen. People walk around boasting about things that used to be shame. We all, we all be bold about Jesus. Mm -hmm. One man said he went to a, a, a years ago, I heard him testify, he went to a car dealership. And he said that the, this car sale, the salesman kept every other every other word, the car salesman kept saying, G this and G that, and start cussing, using God's name. He said he jumped on top of a car and just said, Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the guy looked at him and said, What's wrong with you? He said, You gonna cuss him? I'm gonna praise him. Y'all want to give God yeah, some praise right there, yeah. amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. We ought to get bold with our testimony also. They will cuss yeah. you praise him, amen? amen. They said GD and in, in there, all these words that said, you ought to give God a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And watch the praise silence the wicked. Mm -hmm. 
Amen, somebody, because that's the God we serve. He's a wonderful yeah. God in it. Yeah. How many know you're glad you know you hooked up with the truth today? Yeah. You glad you hooked, I'm glad I'm hooked up with the truth. And you, when you hook yeah. up with the truth, you don't mind telling the truth. You don't mind living in the truth. Yeah, I understand. None of us are perfect. I heard it over and over again. We know that we're not perfect, but we're being perfected. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that we're still, I know I'm still in the process. God is still pulling things out of me, but I took some time this morning to reflect on some things I had to do. Some things, you got to take time to reflect. Some things that I had to do. I remember years ago going to hear a sermon that was so powerful in my, to my spirit because uh, the preacher preached this sermon. He said this. He says, God is appalled, but we are pleased. Mm. He preached a whole series on that for several weeks. And I kept thinking, wow, that stuff that we're pleased about, that God says, you know, this is just pleasing to me. <clears throat> and so I want to. Live to please him. Amen. Amen. I want to preach to please him. I want to teach to please him. Mm -hmm. I want to be what he wants me to be, even though it may not be popular. I want to do what he says to do because in the end, I want to end up on the right path. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to run. I want to follow the right path because I want to be, I want to warn you, God. I don't want to be like those who are going to stand before the Lord at the end time, still thinking they're serving God. At the end time, still thinking that they have served God. And they're going to say, Lord, did we not do many wonderful works? Didn't we bring, didn't we do miracles? Didn't we do many wonderful acts before you? And Jesus is going to say that apart from me, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. These are people who were doing religious things, but did not know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Doing right things, but did not know Jesus. Doing things that look holy, but did not know Jesus. And they didn't know they didn't know Jesus. So if I can shake you this morning. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Give me a holy shake. Mm -hmm. If I can shake you this morning and say wake up. And face the truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus is that truth. Mm -hmm. And all my life needs to be governed by what he says. And what pleases him. How many want to go with me this morning on this journey? Amen. I want you to join me in this journey of life. It's a journey. I started walking it a long time ago. But God not through with me yet. Yes. How many want to join me in this journey to meet the truth? Hallelujah. And to walk by the truth. And to live by the truth. And that when he says something, it's not an opinion. It's absolute. Amen. Amen. People say, that's how you view things. No, I'm not, I don't want you to have... I did all this teaching one time in one of my classes. And I was trying to tell a young lady some things were going on. And at the end of it, she says, I admire your opinion. I would consider it. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to bang my head against the wall. I've been teaching the scripture with all my heart. And at the end of it, she says, I admire your opinion. It's not admiring me. It's not my opinion. I'm giving you, I'm actually reading word for word what this word says here. And I'm, I'm reading it in the context of what Paul intended to be and giving you this. It's not about my opinion. It's not about my view. My views get me all messed up. Mm -hmm. How many make bad decisions in your view? Mm -hmm. It's not about my view. It's about what God says. And what God says is, what God does, he changes my view. Mm -hmm. I not only have the truth in God's word, the good news is the truth has me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad about it? Amen. The truth. Amen. Sought me when I was still in my sin. Mm -hmm. The truth came after me. While I still was making bad decisions, mm -hmm. caught up in myself, the truth pursued me and said, Michael, where are you? The truth pursued me while I was in the bushes trying to camouflage, trying to make myself feel whole by what I had on. Mm -hmm. Trying to make myself feel whole by changing my environment. Trying to make myself feel whole by getting more education. Make myself feel whole by, by getting friends. Trying to make myself whole, but I realized none of these things satisfied. And when it was all said and done, I got home by myself with all these things I tried to do, I was still empty. Mm -hmm. I was still purposeless. Mm -hmm. I was still lonely and still broken inside. Mm -hmm. After all I tried to do, it still wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve were hiding because they felt naked, but they were still hiding. Although they clothed themselves with fig leaves, they still felt like it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. So they went in the bushes. <laughs> And it still felt like it wasn't was enough. Because they said, we heard you and we hid. So all their efforts, they still didn't find adequacy in what they could do. 
I'm here to tell you right now, you will never find adequacy in anything you'll try to do for yourself. Mm-hmm. Money won't do it. You got people who are rich and crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I got yep. people I know right now got all the money you can think of, but they're not happy. Mm-hmm. You can have a house and not have a home. Mm-hmm. Woo. You can have a family of friends and still be lonely. Because nobody can satisfy you. And you should not put that burden on anybody. No, Don't no. try to make somebody be your savior that's not capable of being a savior for themselves. We run to people. We, we get dis- disappointed because this person, this pastor, this teacher, this person did me wrong after I had all my hopes that they would do me right. And you say, I'm not going back to church anymore because the pastor is not right. But who are you serving? Mm. My God. But you know what you gotta know how to do? You gotta pick yourself up and walk on. Hallelujah, somebody. I, mean, I wonder if somebody can get a praise with me right now on that. Yeah. You gotta learn how to take your, to pack your bags and move on. Because you want to do the will of God above all things else. Mm-hmm. I had to tell friends, no, we can't hang together no more. This, this is tests, y'all. The test. I had to tell situation, no, we can't do this anymore. We you know why? Not because it doesn't feel good to sin. It's not right in God's sight. My, my, my. And I'm here to tell you that when you do it God's way, he will make ways for you. Mm-hmm. He will open doors for you. He will see you through the toughest of times. I'm not here to tell you you'll never have tough times. I'm here to tell you God will see you through the toughest of times. Make those decisions for him. Get off the fence. Stop playing religion and be a child of God. Amen. I'm challenging you today. Be who God called you to be. Not part of the way, but all the way. Say, God, I want to give you everything. I'm tired of bouncing back and forth. On the fence, between decisions. Hard to between decisions. Say, ask for me in my house, we're going to serve God. Hallelujah, somebody. Mm-hmm. Ask for me in my house, we're going to serve God. We're going to walk with him. Stop, stop being in between the two decisions. I'm going to do just enough good so I won't go to, to hell, but I'm going to do just as much bad so I can have fun. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to want either one of them. Because you're no good to either. The devil can't trust you and God can't use you. <laughs> so come on over to the Lord's side. I said this years ago. I'm going to take my seat. I keep talking y'all that. I just said this a long time ago. I guess the band's repeating because true is true. I said, why go to hell cramped up? Mm-hmm. Why are you going to hell in church shoes and robes? <laughs> why go cramped up? Why spend hours and hours in service and you had no intention of living for God? Mm. Why do all that and not be the real thing? Ask God, make me the real thing. Mm-hmm. I still pray that prayer. After all these years, I said, God, I don't want to look the part. I don't want to appear the part. I don't want to uh, uh, have titles in front of my name just to have titles. I want to be your man. Yes. Just told God this morning, I want to be your man. You know what I'm saying? I want to be your woman. I want to be your child. I want to be your girl. I want to be, be the one. The one that you will use in these last times to help people turn around. Amen. I want to be that one. Amen. Will you surrender with me this morning? Will you join me in surrender? Yes. And tell God I want to be that one. I want to be that one. I, be that one. Uh, I don't want to just talk about the truth. I want to know the truth. Amen. Yes, and I want that truth to set me free. Amen. Yes, will you be one of those this morning that will say, Lord, I surrender? Mm-hmm. Huh. Will you be that one this morning and say, God, you can use me in any way you see fit? Will you be that one when he's calling you out of a lifestyle, out of a living situation? We be the one to walk out and say, no, I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. I've got to live for God. Will you be that one? That's what he's looking for, amen, in these last name of days. The one who said, you know what? Lord, I'll go all the way with you because you've been so good to me. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise right there. Amen. Give God praise. You, give God praise and honor and glory. Use me, Lord. Huh? Yes. Y'all want that this morning? Use me, Lord. Use, Use me, Lord. Lord. Take my hands, my life, my all. Mm-hmm. Clean me from the inside out. Clean me from all the bad motives and motivations that are floating inside of me, the bad mindsets. I had to come to God, I mean, just, to, just to, to this morning and just turn and repent. Because you know what? There's something the devil will try to pull you back into that you left out of years ago. Mm-hmm. He does it suddenly. Mm-hmm. He gives you these uh, light temptations. Now, there's more light temptations develop into deeper temptations. But you got to learn how to cut it off right there when it comes light. Amen. Some things I won't look at. Some things I, I, when I'm floating on social media, I, I, I skip by them. Because some things I know that I don't need to look at. I don't need to see. you 
got to be that way. Not because I'm trying to be, I, well, I keep saying I'm not trying to be, I'm trying to be holier, but I'm not trying to outdo anybody in my holiness. I'm just trying to be what God wants me to be. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's all I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be what God designed me to be. Amen. That's all I'm trying to do. And I'm doing it not in my own strength, but in the power of the day is Pentecost Sunday. Without the Holy Spirit, I could do none of these things. You could do Amen. none of these things. You got help. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He said, I'm going to send the comfort to you. He will abide with you forever. You got the Holy Ghost inside of you. Living and abiding. And what the Holy Spirit wants to do, the Holy Spirit wants to come in our lives and show forth the, char the character of Christ through our lives. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good news? Amen. I'm going to leave y'all on. I'm going to take my seat. I got some more to say. I'm going to leave y'all at that thought. <laughs> That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. So happy Pentecostal Sunday. God bless you. Come on, Mike. Give us our phone. Business household, visiting all the households listening in right now, visiting every every heart on the sound of my voice right now, Lord. Thank you for being a, a huge part of our lives, the only part that matters. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you. Can't say thank you enough. Uh, thank you for sending your your son Jesus to this earth, living thirty three years. You lived thirty three years perfectly, and we can't make it thirty three seconds. Mm. Lord, thank you. And you died on the cross for us. The spotless lamb. The perfect lamb. Sacrificed for our sins. Yeah. Without blemish. Mm. Lord, I can't say thank you enough. There's nothing I can do to repay you for what you've done for us already. So I want to bend the knee to you. Make me what you want me to be so that I can walk for you. Not to raise my own praise, but to raise your praise. Mm -hmm. Not to start a kingdom of my own, but to raise your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Use the hands in this ministry as your hands to draw more people to you. Allow us to, be, allow us to give open arms to embrace all the lost people of this world, Lord. There's so many people that have been in church and discouraged. Allow us to draw those people in. Bring them back home. Although we fall, we trip on a regular basis, that doesn't mean that we have to stay on the ground. Mm -hmm. We can be lifted back up by you. With your rod, we can help, we can walk again. We're your staff. We're your we're your sheep. You're our shepherd. Wherever you go, we want to go. Well, please allow us. Give us guidance in all that we do. Tell us what each step is. If you're not going, we don't want to go. Lord, make every step obvious to us. And please continue to give us the peace, the joy, the love, all your gifts, so we can share with all the people we come for, we, we come to. We, we, we try to plant these seeds in all that we do in this ministry. I look forward to the day that you can you can bask on the fruit of our labor. It's not for us to bask on, but we give it to you, Lord. Everything we plant is for you, Lord. It's not for our glory, it's for yours. Just you. You're the all that matters and all that we do. Lord, please allow this ministry to touch every heart, to draw more people closer to you, touch everybody on the sound of my voice, let them go forth in this week. Because every time we walk out, we, we face turmoil. It's, um, unfortunately, sometimes it seems like it's safer in the prisons than it is in the streets right now, Lord. Because the twisted ways of the world, the minds have been twisted. The truth has been twisted. The devil is a liar, and he's very active. But you can <coughs> stomp him out, Lord. You have the power to stomp him out at any time. But you want us to to make you our Lord and Savior. You as our Lord means we follow your word. Mm -hmm. You're our Savior because you are our Lord. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, please allow this ministry to go forth. Let this message go forth and touch some hearts and mend some minds. Bring some hearts back together. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 God bless your family.
I speak the truth today, but I speak in love and concern for the things that I see. It breaks my heart to see us going in such a diverse direction from what God has called. It breaks my heart to see people's lives being further broken by making ungodly decisions, going down ungodly roads to try to find a happy ending somehow. And when I see these things, it breaks my heart. And I pray that you it breaks your heart to see the world going in the direction it's going and enough to want to do something to help, enough to pray, enough to encourage someone to walk in the right way. I know everybody won't accept that. That's okay. We, we can't save anybody, but we can just give them the word, the word of God. We can't save anybody. We give them the truth and let them deal with the truth. So I'm praying that there's some the kernel of truth has been planted in your heart and life that will cause you to turn a little close to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because he's a wonderful Savior. I know I preach hard and I preach with compassion because I feel that way in my heart and my life. I feel that we need to get the word out. That the word of God is what's going to change lives and turn people's lives around. And even help our streets get better. Mm -hmm. I'm marching. It's fine. It's beautiful and all the other things. But you never saw Jesus marching down the street. You see him dealing with individuals on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And that's where the real work is. Amen. 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 Our marches are good. It shows that we are not satisfied. We're dissatisfied. But marches won't change hearts. God changes hearts. Amen. And that's what I'm concerned about is the hearts being changed. And that's what Jesus was concerned about, his hearts being changed. So keep praying, praying for us that God will give us vision to what we can do to help. Um, to help in our, where we are, to help as we branch out as, as a ministry, to help uh, alleviate some of the pains that things are going through. But most of all, we want to lift Jesus up in all we do. We always have a spin on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Never for self-glory. Never to draw attention to ourselves or to the ministry. What we do, we do because we want to lift up Jesus. Amen. Amen. So God bless. We love Amen. you. Come be with us on Friday night for our Bible study. We're ending Romans up. We're uh, moving slowly. Verse by verse. We're getting there. They'll we move through Romans and we'll come back again on uh, next Sunday for our 9 o'clock Sunday school. And then our service again. And our, um, our outreach ministry is, what, what's the date? June 18th. June 18th. We're, getting, we're gathering things now for that outreach ministry. So if you want to help us, Give me a call. Give us a text. Let us know you want to be there or just show up. Most of all, keep us in your prayers that God will continue to provide for us so we, we can reach the community. God bless you, my family. We love you. King of Praise Ministry signing out. Have Amen. a blessed day.